Okay, and now we're going to get into confidence intervals. Um, confidence intervals is kind of why we do this. Um, we're creating confidence intervals because we want to be able to adequately estimate mu um, with a high level of confidence. That's, that's the layman's terms. So if we look at this, the probability that the confidence interval will not contain the population mu is denoted by alpha. So alpha is this new number that we're going to be talking about, and it's uh, type 1 error. Um, I don't generally refer to it as type 1 error, but I just wanted to mention it because that is that is what it is. Type 1 error, and then beta is type 2 error. We really don't get into beta in this class, but alpha is essentially the probability that we draw a conclusion and it's wrong all right so naturally we want that probability to be very very low okay so as you can see when we do confidence intervals we're going to be working with really really small alphas so then one minus an alpha that's small so the probability that we're wrong essentially is going to be a large number so we want we want a confidence level of say 95 percent or 99 percent those are actually going to be the two that we most commonly use in this course. So here's the formula. Okay, in general the probability is 1 minus alpha that the population mean mu is contained in the interval. Okay, and the interval that we're looking at is x bar plus or minus z sub alpha over 2 times the square root of the sampling uh, or not the square root, the sigma of the sample mean. Okay, and that is to say, now we, we further expand that formula out and we say x bar plus or minus z of alpha over 2, okay, times sigma divided by the square root of n. So the only difference there is that sigma divided by the square root of n is that sigma x bar expanded, right? So sigma x bar right here is sigma over the square root of n. Okay, the normal points uh, z of alpha divided by 2 gives a right hand tail area under the standard normal curve equal to alpha over 2. The normal uh, point minus z alpha over 2 gives a left hand tail area under the uh, normal curve equal to alpha over 2. The area under the standard normal curve between um, negative z alpha over 2 and z alpha over 2 is 1 minus alpha. Okay, that sounds like a foreign language, but I'm going to draw a very simple picture that I think should, um, should make this more clear. Okay, so we have our standard normal curve. Uh, let's pretend that that's symmetrical and normal and whatnot. Okay, so standard normal curve, something like that. Okay, and we want to come up, well, actually, we're going to look at, we're not going to call that mu, we're going to call that x bar. And we want to have, we want to eventually make a confidence interval, okay, with a certain alpha. Let's call alpha 0.05, okay, which means this implies that we're going to have. 95% confidence, right? So, so this 0.05 is the probability that we're wrong, 95% probability that we're right, okay? So we're gonna have an interval and we're gonna chop off the ends. This first thing, so this, so we're gonna have a certain z value here, z is equal to something, right? And then z is also equal to something right here. One is gonna be the negative version, one's gonna be the positive version. But when we know that the probability of being wrong is 0.05, we know that that's going to be on these tails. Okay, that's going to be out of our range. So our confidence area is right here. Our confidence interval is in here, right? It's, it's this area right here. Okay, and so the probability of us being wrong, because it's symmetrical, is going to be 0.05. And so we're going to have 0.025 right here. So half of that 0.05 and 0.025 right here okay 
So that's those are the different tails where we're wrong. Okay, and so then finding the z value is just going to be easy as finding either one of these points. If we we could do it one of two ways, um, we could say, well, we know 0.025 is above this point right here in probability, so we just need to find the um, z value that um, I guess corresponds with 1 minus 0 0.025 or 0 0.975 in the um, standard normal curve or because that would be our cumulative area under the curve or we could look on this side and find um, the z value that corresponds to 0 0.025 I think this is one is easier because we have to do less thought there's like less um, kind of logic that goes into it and it's just like well we could just find the negative z value over here so we're going to look in the table for 0 0.025 so we pull up our table scroll down and find um, our z table we're on the left hand side of it we're on the negative side of it which is a good thing and now we want to look within the table in order to find a probability of 0.025 okay and we actually get very lucky because there is one that is exactly equal to it. I'm on this line right here and we see 0.025 in here and that corresponds to the z value of negative 1.9 6 negative 1.96 So this is equal to negative 1.96. And by the rules that are given above here, um, we know that this is just going to be positive 1.96. But let's go ahead and check that. right? So we would actually be looking for the cumulative area. So it would be the probability that z, well, we'll just leave it at that. We're looking for 0.975 in the table. So we go here. Now we go for, over to the positive side. Now let's just check. Let's go over to 1.96. Boom. We have 0 0.9750 exactly. So it, it, it's perfectly on there. 1.96 is our is our positive z. So that's that. That's how we find that z value in our confidence interval formula. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to start on our worksheet and we're going to solve some problems okay so go ahead and, and turn to your worksheet we're going to work on numbers one two and three number one a business week reports that its subscribers who plan to purchase a new vehicle plan to spend a mean of twenty seven thousand one hundred assume that the new vehicle price for the population of business week subscribers has a mu of 27,100. So that's an assumption that we're making. And a standard deviation of sigma equal to 5,200. What is the probability that the sample mean new vehicle price for a sample of 50 subscribers is within $1,000 of the population mean? Okay. So first let's calculate what sigma is or what our sigma for our sample mean is. All right, what is the probability that the sample mean new vehicle price for a sample of 50 subscribers is within 1,000 of the population mean? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what our sigma x bar is. And we know from our formula is that's just going to be sigma over the square root of n. Okay, which sigma is defined as 5200, and then n is going to be the number of our sample. So, square root of 50, and that is equal to 735.39. Okay, and then, so, essentially, now we're just going to be taking a z-score, and we're going to be running z-scores. Okay, so the first z-score, because it's saying we want to know uh, 
if it's going to be within $1,000 of the population mean or of the proposed population mean, okay? So what are our two, what are our two numbers for 1,000 between each population mean or between the population mean? We're looking at 28,100 and we're also looking at 26,100, right? Those are numbers that are within 1,000 of each population mean. So we're just going to calculate z-scores uh, based upon those. So z is equal to 28,100 minus 27,100 all over the sigma of x bar. So 735.39. Okay, and um, so that's that, and that gets us... So not surprisingly, the top of this is positive 1,000, right? Because that's like in the definition of the problem, essentially. Like, So it's going to be positive 1,000 over 735 plus 735.39. So this actually gets us a positive 1.36. And then so not surprisingly, this 26,100 minus 27,100 is going to be a negative 1,000 on the top divided by that same 735.39 gets us a negative 1.36. I'm going to go ahead and move this down. There's a little bit more room to work. There we are. Okay. All right. And then essentially now we're just going to be finding the probability that Z is between those two. So, so realistically, we're looking at the probability that X is between 26,100 and 28,100, right? But we just calculated z-score so that we can actually use our table. And so then that's going to be equal to the probability that z is between negative 1.36 and positive 1.36. Which we know that we do this by probability that z is less than 1.36 minus z is less than negative 1.36. I'm not going to explain how to do that um, because that's what we learned in chapter 6. Okay, So at, from this point I'm going to assume that everybody knows exactly how to do chapter 6 stuff. If you don't, feel free to ask questions. That's fine. I just can't go over that kind of stuff during the lecture. So um, for this one, for the positive 1.36, the probability that we get is 0.9131 and for the negative 1.36, it is 0 0.0869. We get these from the tables, and that gets us 0 0.8269. So this is the probability that the sample mean is going to be within 1,000 of the population mean on either side. And that's 82%. Moving on to B, um, what is the probability of the new sample mean price? Uh, for a sample of 100 subscribers is within 1,000 of the population mean. So this is essentially the same problem, except that we're upping the number of subscribers. So we're changing the n value. So I'm just going to go ahead and do what makes this problem different. Um, so the only thing that n affects, right, so we're still looking within 1,000, so that when we go to do our Z calculation or to, to go find our Z score or our Z values, the top part of the fraction is still going to be the 28,100 minus 27,100, giving us a positive 1,000 for one end, and then we'll get a negative 1,000 for the other end. So that's not going to change. What will change is our sigma of X bar because our sample changes. So our sigma of X bar is going to still be equal to sigma over the square root of n, but now n is different. 
So sigma stays the same, so it's 5200, and now it's going to be over the square root of 100, not square root of 50. So that's going to be a nice round number. So it's uh, going to be 5200 divided by 10. I think this is 520. So now I'm going to just substitute this 520 into the different z formulas. So I'm going to simplify because we know that um, each one of the z scores is going to be a positive uh, 1000 on the top and then a negative 1000 on the top of the other one. So I'm just going to say this is equal to z is going to be equal to 1000 over 520. And this other z is going to be equal to negative 1000 over 520. At this point, you know that they're going to be the same number, except one's going to be negative, one's not going to be negative. And if we look on the Z table, um, we're going to get a positive 1.92, negative 1.92. I guess we, never mind. We don't look on the Z table yet. That's just a calculation. So 1.92, um, negative 1.92. So then we do the same procedure that we did now right here. And we're going to get the probability that Z is less than 1.92. And we are getting uh, 0.9726. And that's going to be minus the probability that Z is less than um, negative 1.92. And that's just going to be 0.0274. And they are then going to subtract out to give us a probability of 9452. What's interesting about this, so now we're saying what is the probability, <coughs> excuse me, was probability that the sample mean of a new vehicle price of a sample of 50 subscribers is within 1,000 of the population mean. So it's like fairly accurate to the population mean. Okay, notice what happens here. We have a sample of 50 in A. And we have roughly an 83% chance that our sample mean is going to be within 1,000 of the mu, 1,000 of um, our 27,100. Okay, we increase the sample size to 100, so we double the sample size, and look how much accuracy we get. Now we have a 94.5% chance that um, we're going to be within 1,000 of the sample um, of the of the uh, proposed population mu, right? So this is just trying to illustrate the fact that like we double that sample size and we're getting a heightened level of accuracy on our on our estimate of mu. Okay. Within what range should the middle ninety five percent of the sample means fall? Assume a sample size of one hundred. Okay, so this is asking us essentially to do a um, to do a confidence interval. <coughs> so the first thing that we need to understand, or the first thing that we need to figure out, is what does this ninety-five percent mean? Okay, well we need to get it to something usable, right? So if we thought about this, we would look at our uh, like a little. Um, standard normal curve here and we'd say well we need 95 percent of the results to be in here okay so that leaves us with 0.025 here 0.025 here and then thus we're going to be looking for that 95 percent so we're looking at kind of an alpha of 0.05 but this is going to be one of these standard numbers that we look for and i think we just did that um, in the lecture and we came up with that for the 95% confidence interval, Z is going to be equal to plus or minus 1.96. Okay, and that's what we confirm by looking at the table. Okay, so it says now within what range should the middle 95% of the sample means fall? Assume a sample size of 1,000. Okay, and so then this would be, all right, about that mean where should we be at assuming that we have um assuming that we have um a reasonable assumption of of the population mean okay and this is as easy as calculating and solving for um x bar in the z formula so we have plus or minus 1.96 
We put plus or minus, and this just signifies that we're actually going to be doing two calculations, one for a plus, one for a minus. You'll know what I mean in a second here. We have our Z formula, which is just going to be X bar minus mu, right? So mu is 27,100. And that's going to be all over sigma sub X bar. Now, because we have an N equal to 100 here, we're using the sigma sub X bar from our last part, the 520. If we had a, a sample size of 75, say, we'd have to calculate like a whole new sigma sub X bar. If we had a, a sample size of 50, just go up to problem A and look there. Okay, so now we're going to be running two different calculations. Let's run it for um, regular 1.96 first and then for negative uh, 1.96. So I'll just multiply both sides by 520. So arrow um, 1.96 times 520. And I'll just simplify it all the way. This whole thing plus 27,100 is going to equal x bar. So that's how we solved for x bar. And we do that as well for the negative 1.96 times 520. And that's going to be equal x bar in that other problem. And the two numbers that we get um, are, uh, they create a range for us. So for the positive version, um, we're going to get uh, 28,000, 19.2, 119.2. And for the lower, geez, my pen's not working, we're going to get 26,080.8. That's going to be our range. It's going to be our 95% confidence interval of um, sample means falling away from the mean. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because it's getting pretty long. So we're going to conclude this at uh, uh, for learning um, sample means and using uh, the Z tables. So when we continue, we're going to use the T tables and then move on from there.